Hello there, welcome to my NXT talk. Yeah, another desperate attempt for a uh, intro, but we are here now and the Great American Bash is over and it's time for new feuds everyone. So tonight's NXT kicked off with JC Jane versus Alaya Valkyria. I feel like I'm pronouncing her name wrong, but that was the match. It was not a bad match, uh, and uh, I remembered last week when Lyra had a match with Rhea, it was a good match, and Rhea was like, just show me that you're tough and bring that to JC Jane. And somehow, uh, on the Great American Bash, they fought each other in the backstage, and Rhea was there, and she was like, I was hoping to see that. And I honestly don't understand Rhea whose side is taking, but it doesn't matter right now. Because I kind of don't understand when this feud is going, but I'm gonna let it slide, I'm gonna wait a little bit and hopefully I'm gonna see where it actually goes. The one question I have, and probably some of you might know this because I have no clue how this happened and more importantly why this happened, when Mandy Rose was kicked out of NXT, why did we break Toxic Attraction? I remember watching this and I was like, why? Why are we breaking them? Like, I was not a fan of Toxic Attraction in any capacity, but right now when they're separate, I don't watch any of their separate matches. They're just not that interesting for me, I'm sorry to say. Maybe when they were together, they would be more interesting, I don't know. Next week, we're gonna have Dragon Lee versus Dirty Dominic Mysterio for the NXT North American Championship, which is gonna be amazing because Rey Mysterio is gonna be in the corner of Dragon Lee. And I have a question. <laughs> I always have these questions, man. Rey Mysterio, when he started feuding with Dom, he changed brands just because he didn't want to be in the same brand as Dominic. But right now, going on his own to NXT where Dominic is gonna be. Like, why? Uh, I mean, I am not complaining. I'm gonna see the greatest luchador of all time. I'm gonna see the rising star in Do uh, Dragon Lee. I'm gonna see Dominic. I'm gonna see Rhea, freaking Ripley, bloody Ripley. Probably she's gonna body slam Ray. That's my suspicion, and I'm really excited for next week. Dijag versus Eddie Torpe, Eddie Torpe, Eddie Torp. I'm not sure how his name is. Sorry, everyone is saying that Eddie Torpe is looking a little bit like young Randy Orton. Aesthetically, I can kind of see that, I can kind of agree. On the Dijak, I kind of want... I'm surprised by, about Dijak. I'm super surprised how that guy went from two years ago fighting Keith Lee for the North American Championship or the NXT Championship, I don't know what he was fighting for. He was at the top of the world and from then on he went to the main roster, he went to Retribution. Somehow Retribution turned into a big flop which I, I don't understand why it turned into a big flop. Probably WWE was not really invested in it, but I was seeing a lot of potential in Retribution. It was just not given enough screen time in my opinion. But from then on, he went to T-Bar, T-Bar with Maze, and people just start disliking him. And I'm saying again, I'm not a big fan of Dijak, but I'm really surprised how he went from the top of the world to a mid-card guy in NXT and it's super sad to see and I hope he brings some heat again soon. Metaphor versus the NXT champion Carmelo Hayes and Wes Lee. It was an interesting match, what can I say? Uh, it's obvious that Wes Lee is gonna be the next in line. It is a little bit sad to see Trick separating from Melo but this is the right thing to do and it was done so gracefully and I actually enjoyed it because I'm not the only one, I'm sure about this, I'm not the only one when I'm saying this that I was waiting for a long time Trick to actually turn on Mellow 
it was done so gracefully. Just Trick said, I don't want to be in your shadow, I want to be my own character, my own thing, and I want to hunt championships. Maybe he're gonna, he's gonna go for the uh, North American Championship or for the Heritage Cup, which I highly doubt, but still, I admire that, but it's a little bit sad, but it's good. Wesley versus Carmelo Hayes, I can't wait, it's gonna be a banger. Baron Corbin versus Andre Chase. I love that segment. Which segment? The fight? No. I, I, the match itself was nothing special. Baron Corbin, as I said, I like him. But I like the whole idea of Tia losing because of Andre and now Tia is mad at Andre. We saw that Tia just throw a towel at his match. Just how he threw a towel at her match. But the sad part that I was really upset about was that the referee didn't sell the towel, so he didn't cancel the match. Baron Corbin got the towel, threw it away from the ring. Tia just left the the arena, and yeah, it was it was not that satisfying. Hopefully, the story is gonna develop more, and we're gonna be some we're gonna see something interesting from Tia slash Andre slash Duke Hudson slash. Baron Corbin. Hopefully Baron Corbin is not finished with Gable Stevenson though. I mean, they shouldn't have been finished with Gable. I don't know why he's not there. Next up, Schism segment. My best NXT moment is from there. I kind of love these little moments in WWE when they're promos, but not exactly promos, but they're hating each other, but they're, they're liking each other, but they're comedy, but they're not comedy. You know what I'm talking about. I love these segments. And I was having bigger expectations from that segment, this schism, but it was not that bad. It got me really confused though, because in the past, whenever you have loser leaves match, the loser actually leaves. For example, Daniel Bryan left. Uh, for example, Santos Escobar left with Legado del Fantasma and many more examples about this. In this situation, I now understand that the Creed Brothers are actually still not leaving and I'm kinda confused but props to Schism these days you can say for a lot of stuff in wrestling that is predictable and stuff like this but to the stuff that is happening around Schism probably they're creating so much noise online and all of that that you can't actually predict what is going on because for weeks before their lever match Everyone thought that the Dyad is gonna lose and basically they're gonna leave NXT and WWE, but they won. So props to Schism for the unpredictability. Because nowadays everything is predictable and for them nothing actually is predictable and I have no idea what is going on and what they have prepared. So good job. Last but not least, actually maybe it's the least, I don't know. Gallus versus D'Angelo, Stax, the tag team champs, and a mystery partner who was the US title contender, Santos Escobar. It was a good match, it was not a bad match. Uh, I was surprised that Santos Escobar returned to NXT that early. It's not even a year after he left NXT. But it was nice moment. The only thing that confuses me is, is this leading to a titles rematch with Gallus? What is this leading to actually? And to be fair, if, is, if it's leading to rematch, can we make it more vocal? Are they gonna have rematch No Mercy? Are we building it up right now? And if it's not leading to rematch, what are we doing still with Gallus? Give these boys a little bit of a break and let that guy who is not wrestling in Gallus, he was wrestling last night. I'm talking about this guy. He's the coolest guy in, guy is in Gallus. Let this guy give some tips to the other two guys and I'm sure that these guys will rock like paper scissors, you know? Rock paper scissors, it's gonna be amazing. I'm sure they can do it, I'm sure they can pull it off. But yeah, I'm happy with that the family is having the titles. I don't know if we are leading towards a rematch at No Mercy, what's gonna happen with the tag team titles. Honestly, I don't know if there is another team, tag team in NXT that wants the titles. Maybe the Dyad, 
maybe the Creed brothers. I have no other comment. A little bit confused of the situation right now, of the tag teams, of the champs, of the chimps. <laughs> anyway, that's it for NXT for this week. I'm gonna see you soon for uh, some Macadown. I hope you enjoyed the episode and uh, have a lovely day and a lovely week. Peace.